What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out. Now for this video, we're going to be jumping into Batman Detective Comics issue 1042. If you haven't been keeping up with this line, go ahead and check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything that's been going on with Detective Comics. And be sure you stay all the way through to the end so you're not missing any of the road to Task Force Z. Now in our last issue, we left off with Batman getting infected and turning into this Cthulhu looking monster. Now under the control of Vile, the jury, all of the goons, everybody, they're about to be royally screwed. And with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so we're dropping into downtown Gotham City. And right now, Batman is currently infected. Being tagged with whatever this, this vile parasite thing is. Someone orchestrated it to where he would get infected. And with Batman slowly turning, with this thing slowly starting to take over his mind, he starts getting surrounded. But this was all part of the plan. Mr. Worth and Penguin, they planned this together, thinking it would make him go into madness, not knowing the vial would be able con to control him in such an aspect. But the thing is, they have vial currently locked up, or at least they believe that is what's going on, believing him to be currently unconscious. With the consciousness of Batman being taken over, we see vial sit back up. And with him sitting up, he immediately starts attacking those around him, infecting them as well. And with him taking control of them, they start running out of the room and opening fire on everybody. And now we are seeing a war break out, and Vile is doing whatever he can to take over as many people as possible, creating his own little army, and now he is trying to take hold of all of the Gotham Underground. A new force to be reckoned with, he wants to wipe the slate right here and right now. Take Penguin, take Worth, take Batman, all of them off the table. And with things going sideways, Penguin makes his exit. With him making his exit, Mr. Worth falling to the ground after Penguin zaps him, we see Batman fully transforming, fully being taken over, and, and looking like a hideous Cthulhu monster. And having one goal, that goal being to hunt down Mr. Worth and turn him. Mr. Worth, seeing Batman coming after him, he tries to make the getaway. Seeing this monster coming after him, he makes his way to the rooftop. Going up there trying to get some kind of signal to call for help. But he is too late. Batman, Cthulhu Batman is what I'm going to call him. It is on top of him already. And as they are standing at a standstill, Mr. Worth pulls out his pistol and tries to shoot Batman, but his gun is out of ammo. And so they start fighting with their fists. And Batman, getting the upper hand, knocks him clean out. And he drags him over to the side. Dragging him over to the side, this parasite is telling him to throw him over. And the whole time, Batman is trying to fight it. He's trying to fight this thing as best he can. But at the end of the day, he just can't overcome it. And he throws Mr. Worth off the side of this building. But Batman, being freaking Batman, is able to overcome it just for a second. Enough to shoot his grappling hook and, and slow down Mr. Worth's fall. So Worth doesn't necessarily die. He's definitely going to feel it in the morning though. And so Batman is struggling so freaking hard right now to be able to get any kind of control over himself. And while he is struggling with that, this is where we see the Huntress make her arrival. Now with her currently being in contact with Oracle, she's the one that let Oracle know that Batman had been turned. That Batman had been hit by Vile and somehow he has control of him now. Being able to see a kind of connection if you will. Because she had been turned by him and healed, but there was some remnants left over. And as she cuts her way through all of this warehouse, Batman is currently on the rooftop and he has put himself into handcuffs, struggling just to do that. But he's, he's doing this in an attempt to not hurt anybody else. In some kind of attempt to control himself. To not let this parasite control him. 
and Huntress making her way through the warehouse, she is finally met by Vile. Seeing Vile trying to figure out what was left behind inside of her. But Vile lets her know that, that he has some very particular plans for her. And this is when Batman comes crashing in through the window behind her. Handcuffs still on his wrist. And he tries to go after Huntress. But Huntress is able to take Batman and fling him into Vile. And this is where we see Vile, the parasite inside of him, shoot this thing out. And I I'm assuming it's the parasite itself trying to infect Huntress. Almost as if the parasite is leaving Vile to go into her. But she's able to put it down with a crossbow in one freaking shot. Pinning it to the wall, Vile slowly what appears to be dying because he no longer has the parasite in him and just like that this fight is over with it's completely done with and Hugh Vile he died seven days later in a hospital bed they tried to bring him back but it was too late for him now with the Huntress having those visions being able to see what what Vile saw even though he is dead, she can still see some things here and there. And so with this story arc coming to a close, Batman sends a thank you gift to Deb. Just a thank you for everything that she has done to help Mr. Bruce Wayne himself. But that's what's going to take us to Hugh Vile's body. Because right now his body is currently going under autopsy. And while they're putting him under the knife, what seem to be little marble-sized marble eggs end up popping out everywhere and we see these eggs popping out rolling onto the floor and making their way into the sewer system now that will be the end of our batman story and now we're gonna dive into the road to task force z and this story it picks us up with red hood now red hood everything's been building up to, to him and amanda waller creating a team so they can be able to hunt down the Joker. That is the goal, or at least that's what appears to be the overall goal to it. Now, we still do need to cover Suicide Squad Get Joker, so we're going to be covering that here in the near future. But the Red Hood has brought her here to try to get her to do a story for him. Not only that, but he needs her to investigate everything that he doesn't have the time for or can't get around to doing. And so he proposes to her one of the best stories that she will honestly ever get. And because he prefers her as a writer, that's why he is coming to her. But if she doesn't want to work with him, he knows plenty of other individuals that will definitely take this story in a heartbeat and not even question it for one second. And they start going over the information they currently have. Now, as it stands, Deb at least has an understanding right now that Astrid Arkham faked her own death. Now, of course, Red Hood, he's going to counter that with do we know that? Have we actually seen her body in the morgue? Though it's the only logical explanation, the only issue is she is actually dead. Red Hood has seen her body himself. But what it appears to be is somebody is stealing corpses. Because especially for a town like this, a town like this, there are a lot of uses for a corpse like hers. And just because she is dead, it doesn't necessarily mean that she still is dead. And so he tells her to start by asking the mayor about Project Halperin. Ask what it is and why it has full access to his city resources. And so with Red Hood making his exit, she jumps into high gear, checking out everything that he has said to see if this is even worth or a credible story to go after if it's something that would actually be able to be proven at the end of the day and after doing all of her investigating she's able to get somebody to come forward with some evidence that's going to be pretty hardening and with a lot of shady stuff going on deb is really starting to question everything that has been happening and of course red hood he's on a rooftop listening to her entire conversation bugging her phone at some point in time so he can listen in, so he can find out exactly all the information that she gets and ensures that she doesn't hide anything from him. And so Deb deciding that she doesn't necessarily want to call Red Hood just yet, she wants to investigate this a little further, find out if, if people are actually stealing bodies or not. And so she goes ahead and she stakes out Gotham Medical Examiner. And as she's been sitting here for quite some time, there, there seems to be a truck pulling up. Now this truck pulls up, 
and out of the back come a bunch of huge freaking dudes in armor wielding guns. All of them completely messed up. We can only imagine what these guys are up to. Now, simultaneously, this is where we see Deb get completely freaked out because Red Hood shows up and, and opens up the other side of her car door. And as they sit here and have a conversation, they're really just going over everything that has happened, the information Deb has been keeping from Red Hood, her finding out that Red Hood has been tapping her phone, but Red Hood really just telling her, listen, like, I don't know if these guys are stealing bodies. We don't really know anything right now, but the best thing we could do is just go ask them real quick. And so we see Red Hood get out of the car, and he makes his way over to these guys. And as he makes his way over to them, he asks them with a crowbar. He beats the living crap out of these guys. Meanwhile, Deb, she's contemplating whether she should call the police right now. Not sure what the best course of action is. Not sure if running around with a vigilante it is really the best aspect to go. She picks up her phone and she goes to dial 911 only to be hit in the back of the head with a freaking baseball bat, putting her phone to the ground and we can only assume putting Deb on the ground as well. And that is where this issue will end. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. You know, I think this, uh, this Hugh Vile story arc, it wasn't horrible. I wasn't a big fan of Mr. Worth or anything like that, but seeing it all come together at the end with the jury and all of that stuff was pretty unique. Um, Hugh Vile's death was very quick. And we gotta think, you know, is it because it had eggs inside of it already and it was going to release them regardless? And it's part of its life cycle because I, I feel like, you know, Huntress just, you know, shooting that one little sponge looking thing, it ended the story so quickly. And I don't know if that's because they, they didn't have enough time or what the case may be, or if they didn't have enough panels, but it feels like it was rushed to me. But maybe as we get further along, we're going to see those eggs really start to have some kind of impact. And then the, the road to Task Force Z has been pretty interesting. We're going to see how all this comes together. Uh, I, I really felt like they could have added some more into this outside of, of this diner interaction that they use a good four or five pages on. But we're really seeing Red Hood, you know, form a connection with Deb. Really start to form some kind of trust with her. And we're gonna have to see how it all plays out in the end. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you have not yet, do me a favor, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell. Make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out. And until the next breakdown.